Somebody was asking me if I like the K2. The answer is yes, but when it comes to multifilament, the answer is no. Welcome back to the channel today, and we're gonna talk about the K2 Plus from Creality. And I think after seven months of testing this printer, I've got a couple things to say about it, and it's a mixed bag, but I think you're gonna be surprised at the end. So let's jump into it. Thank you so much for supporting our channel. Make sure that you hit that like button down below, subscribe, leave a comment, because it's those things that help support this channel for free and let us do more content for you. Let's jump in and talk a little bit about this printer real quick, the basics. This is an FDM belt driven printer that has a 350 by 350 by 350 millimeter build plate, build space in it. And it's one of the larger printers that we have that we have in, in use right now. I'm gonna start off by saying the printer is good. The CFS system, not so good for the multicolor filament that you're gonna be putting into it. But let's start with just the printer basics. So it has the automatic bed leveling. It's got a filament cutter in it so that when you are changing filament, it does a great job and it's super fast. You can print up to 600 millimeters per second with this thing. So it's a lightning fast printer, but I usually typically dial it back down to 250 to 300 millimeters per second to get a good quality print when I want quality over speed. But printing at draft speed at 400 millimeters per second, it does fine. It's uh, got a 0.4 millimeter head on it that comes stock with it. We t I typically change all of my heads over to 0.6, but I've left this one on here for testing the last several months that, just to see where we fall. And it also comes with, at least ours did, with an upgrade kit. So it has multiple different sized heads that you can put into it. And I will say that since we've had to already change the head in it, change the filament cutter, and change the extruder in it due to the overstress that we put this thing through, they are super easy to change. And you're not going to be able to see it on camera, but there's a cover on the, on the extruder assembly that pops off so that you don't have to worry about taking screws apart right off the bat. And it's a little difficult to work on, but the top does get, you can remove the top here. Um, but because of the CFS system, it does get in the way. So you have to un unhook this, move it off to the side and do what you need to do, anything uh, with clogs and, and working on the head and so forth. But I am happy with the basic part of the printer. Uh, let's talk about the CFS system though quickly. Some pros and cons about this thing. First of all, it's like any system. You have to have the correct size of filament spool. And a few brands in particular, they don't fit in here. And a lot of times if you're using the cardboard spools, if you have any wobble or anything in the spool itself, it doesn't like it. Uh, we have already, you, you probably can't see, but this has already worn through and I flipped these around multiple times. Uh, I have been using tray one here uh, for the most part because the filament change on this does leave a lot of waste. You have a lot of filament poop at the end of every print. I did put a cardboard tray in the back just to make it easy on me, but this was a very, very short uh, print. I, I don't remember exactly what I just printed off of it, but it was a small item with just a few colors in it. And the amount of waste is crazy. I had printed this R2-D2 uh, in parts, of course, the legs, the feet, the body, and the head were all separate pieces that I did in it. And the amount of filament waste was shocking in my opinion, but it did print well. And, uh, you know, the dome alone just came out beautifully. So the machine doesn't care if you're, if you're printing PLA, PLA plus, PET G, silk, it doesn't care. As long as you put the parameters into your slicing software before you start printing, it changes the head temperature and everything else. And it prints beautifully, but the waste. I thought that this was going to uh, you know, be a fairly straightforward print and was shocked to find how many grams of filament I had in my waste tray at the end of this print. And 
that's a little bit of a detriment, but you that's what you get for multicolor printing. I do like the touch screen on this. It's very easy to navigate. And if you've watched my other video, which I will put a card up on the top right, uh, on the K1 Max that I absolutely love. It's a wonderful machine. When it came to the K2, they basically just transferred over the interface, and I appreciate that. That makes it very simple for me. Uh, but I do like it, and I do like where the screen is positioned on this machine. Your USB port, if you want to USB print, is right here. Again, not, not the greatest place for it, but it's not the worst place for it either, as opposed to the K1s, which happens to be down at the bottom of the machine. But I don't use the USB to print. I actually do the wireless printing which is a huge convenience, and I love the fact that they've integrated that into this machine. Now let's talk about a few detriments of this machine in particular. Uh, first of all, the rollers that are up here, we've had to replace these multiple times already because the, the soft rubber that's in here on the rollers, they get eaten up pretty quickly from the spools. And it's weird because there are certain ones that eat it up quicker than others. And I don't know that I can tell you right off the top of my head which ones it is, because I think I'm running some Elegoo right now through this machine and I've had zero wear on it. But a few of the other brands that I've used, especially the cardboard rolls, they typically tend to eat up the rubber a lot quicker. I mentioned earlier that I did have to replace the feeder extruder gear in the head. Uh, we did have a clog where the filament came down and managed to wrap around the gear that was in there. And I think it was kind of a fluke thing, but it required us to, because I think when it got up in there and pinched it, it bent something in there. So I had to order a new extruder gear. With that being said, it was relatively easy to pop that entire feeder gear out and replace it. And I think off memory, it was like $15 or so. So it wasn't a game changer for me where I went, wow, this is a really expensive problem to have. It really wasn't an expensive problem and it was easy to change out. One of the other problems I've had with this machine recently is the hot end got clogged and I was simply unable to clog it, finding out that a piece had broken off somewhere in there and I had to replace the whole nozzle. Again, it wasn't a difficult thing. It was just a couple screws, popped it out, put the new nozzle in, and again, relatively inexpensive to change. So that sounds like a detriment, but really it was just a pain. But if you do 3D printing, you find out that you have to change these parts out occasionally because they do develop problems over time. I'm not upset by it, I expected it, but again, it's just a hassle. But fortunately, when they did the K2, they made it easy enough that if something like this happens once I diagnose it, I order the part, I slap it in, and it's just a, a handful of minutes to be able to have to do that. So that is a good thing, but I was surprised at how quick those two items in particular wore out based on the hours of printing on this thing. Now let's move back up to the CFS system. I don't wanna dog on it too much because I get the fact that you have a lot of wear and tear on this machine when it's running through these, through these Bowden tubes. I've had to replace the Bowden tubes that feed in um, on the underneath side twice now. And they are the ones that come in right through here. But in order to do that, this entire unit has to be disassembled so that you can access those, those Bowden tubes. And again, it's... I was surprised at how quickly it degraded because I understand that you are running filament through, you're pulling it back out to run another filament through to pulling it back out. And sometimes when you're doing a multicolor print, you're just shooting filament back and forth constantly. So there's an, a lot of extra wear that's happening on this. But I was surprised at how quickly they wore out. And especially the ones up here in the top, you can see right here, there's probably some, there is some black filament showing through. And what I did that the wear part is inside the machine, I just simply flipped them to try and uh, minimize my maintenance on this. 
and minimize the use of having to cut more tubes. Now, these do come with extra uh, Bowden tubes and uh, I'm very happy that they sent them because I'm running through them very quickly. But you have to remember, I do have seven months of printing on this machine and the first three months that I got it, it never stopped and it was printing four colors all the time. So to wrap this up, this machine right now is retailing for $12.49 on Creality's website. And I think it might be on sale at the moment, but for $1,250, you get the CFS system as well for the multicolor prints. The printer itself is really good. The few cons that I have on this printer, they all originate up here. This is where my, all my problems have really come from. But the printer itself, when I stick a single color into this, and you know, you could put the spool holder on the side, which is in a very odd place, and I might even be on the back of this one, I do believe, and it's in a very odd place, and I don't want the spool holder for a single color print, but when I do a single color print, it's very fast, and it prints beautifully. So I just printed this off last night, and the quality that it did is phenomenal. I am, I am actually blown away at how well, I blew this model up from yay big to this size and it's almost flawless. I mean, minutes of sanding, you could even throw some paint directly on this and it would look really good. So the quality is definitely there. It's, uh, it's a good machine for a large build machine. And like all of the, current K series prints. It's got a magnetic bed on it. I had had, I have had just a little bit of adhesion problems with this bed, textured bed. Um, I'm still the old school slick bed and put some glue on it kind of guy. That's where I have the majority of my luck from, but this has been okay. I, I don't have any real complaints. It does work for what we use it for. So would I recommend buying this machine? I would recommend buying the K1 Max first, but if you need a larger build plate, the K2 Plus would be a good step up. And I, I would probably recommend still buying this. I, I would get another one of these machines. The CFS system, they're still in their infancy in this multi-filament change color printing right now. This has a little ways to go before it's, in my opinion, reliable and good, but, it does work. I am a fan of the Creality K2 Plus, and I would buy another one if this one went out on me, but the Prusa XL, which I'm going to do another review video now that we've had it for almost a year, once I do the review on that, this price difference is substantially higher on that printer, but I feel like it's an overall better printer, but not nearly as fast as the K2. So hopefully this helped. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I know I glossed over a lot of stuff, but I just wanted to give a quick review because somebody was asking me if I like the K2. The answer is yes, uh, but when it comes to multi-filament, the answer is no. Make sure that you guys hit that like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the bottom. I know that there's some things that I haven't talked about. So if you wanna add your two cents in, I would love to hear from you guys as well, and we'll see you in the next video.